Hey kitties, Black History Month continues with the sci-fi movies of Eddie Murphy. That's right, well, the uh, primary purpose of this month is to celebrate black awesomeness on screen. Every so often we must delve into the depths of absolute darkness and think about what used to be. I miss Eddie Murphy. I miss Eddie Murphy so much, but he just keeps making these movies that are just horrible. And I watched them all in one sitting for you. <laughs> if you look at these movies, you get these bizarre pseudo insights into uh, Eddie Murphy's uh, psyche. And uh, primarily, he seems to be very, very self-absorbed where, you know, he plays as many characters as humanly possible in a film or he seems to always want to be the coolest guy in the room, sometimes at the same time, which is kind of an impressive feat of narcissism. Man, you remember when he was just a funny smartass? Our menu is going to include uh, The Adventures of Pluto Nash, Meet Dave, and The Clumps, The Nutty Professor 2. We start with The Adventures of Pluto Nash, and what's weird is that I didn't realize what was going on until about halfway through the movie, because I wasn't laughing. But, you know, when it's Eddie Murphy in a sci-fi movie, it, it, it's not that shocking that you're not laughing, because it's usually not particularly funny. But the thing was, I realized I wasn't laughing because there weren't any jokes. This movie is actually just a straight-up sci-fi film. It was, you know, marketed essentially as an Eddie Murphy comedy, because it's Eddie Murphy. But no, it's just Eddie Murphy on the moon doing sci-fi stuff. The comic relief is actually Randy Quaid as a robot bodyguard thing. And, you know, the hijinks that he gets up to. But Eddie Murphy's Pluto Nash is really just supposed to be straight up sci-fi scoundrel type, a Han Solo character. He runs a, uh, a uh, the greatest club on the moon that uh, the uh, infin infamous uh, mafia boss Rex Crater wants uh, to buy Pluto's club so that, you know, he can uh, redo it as a casino because on the moon is the only place where casino gambling is still legal. And as a result, strong arming and hijinks and, you know, crime and lasers and everything gets involved. And it's really, really horrible and boring and slow and so self-important. I mean, you gotta picture it sort of like... Um, you know, like Boomerang, or uh, Beverly Hills Cop, or even A Vampire in Brooklyn, where Eddie is trying to present himself as, like, the smoothest guy around. But, you know, in those movies, there's relatable things and or humor to go along with it. And here, it's really just boring, and it's really, really up his own nose with this movie. So much so that the only guy that can ta that can take Eddie down is, in fact, Eddie. Here's a spoiler warning for a movie that's about ten years old that you never wanted to see in the beginning. Rex Crater is a big. It's a big mystery who Rex Crater is. It turns out it's a clone of Pluto Nash, who you know got delusions of grandeur. So it's Eddie versus Eddie because what is an Eddie Murphy movie where he's not playing at least two roles? And it's really, really dull. It's kind of a complete waste of uh, time and talent for everybody else. Because Randy Quaid, I mean, say what you will is what he's turned into. He still is pretty funny. And Pam Greer's in it. Peter Boyle, Rosario Dawson's the uh, the love interest. Uh, Luis Guzman, as always, is just hilarious. But, you know, he's only in it for maybe five minutes. Joe Pants, once again, is popping up in this. And they're all just kind of playing second fiddle to... Uh, Eddie Murphy's sci-fi delusions of grandeur. And the thing is, they didn't end there. Then, a few years later, there was Meet Dave. Now, we put this above Pluto. Meet Dave is the movie where Eddie Murphy is the, ca is the alien captain of a starship that is shaped like... Eddie Murphy. Turns out there's a planet full of Lilliputian type people that uh, need Earth salt to power their planet or else their whole planet is going to just, you know, up and die. And so they send uh, a probe to suck all of the uh, salt out of salt water, which, you know, would end up destroying the world, which they acknowledge it would, but they don't care because they're aliens. And uh, of course something went wrong, so they send the, uh, the bravest Starship Captain and his starship. It's Eddie Murphy captaining, captaining the starship 
Eddie Murphy, or as it comes to be known, Dave Ming Chen. So we have the the two two rules or the two roles for Eddie Murphy, where he's playing the the ship and then the ship's captain. And the thing is, lots of parts of this movie are actually funny, not the least of which involving the always lovely Gabrielle Union and uh, Pat Kilbane of uh, Mad TV. They really, really, they steal a couple of scenes. Um, not so much with Elizabeth Banks, ironically, even though Elizabeth Banks is always hilarious, but mm, she just gets the straight man role. And that's the thing. Most of the movie, you see jokes from other funnier, better movies, or just, you know, fish out of water ideas. Like, the whole first 20 minutes plays a lot like, uh, The Brother from Another Planet, the John Sayles movie featuring, uh, Joe Morton. Um, where it's just fish out of water, alien dealing with, uh, earth culture for the first time and then it becomes lots of you know short circuit two type of uh hijinks where it's like oh he just doesn't get earth culture but he's a robot so he can do all sorts of things and it just drags for a while because there's also like the budding friendship with the little boy that's going to go nowhere and the relationship with elizabeth bank that's all you really gonna go nowhere because he's not a human being he's not even like a sentient robot it's a ship in the shape of a man eddie murphy and by and large it's just dull but there are you know funny parts and all throughout it you can see the like where it could go off into like an even funnier movie with this concept of a starship crew uh, trying to make a human being work which is not surprising because it was written by bill corbett he was the uh, the second voice of uh, crow t robot on mystery science theater and uh one of the writers on mst3k for quite a long time but uh it really you can tell it just got blanded down by uh, notes from the studio and just and probably a lot of just Eddie Murphy's need to be at the center of attention for all of these movies. You don't see that need much worse than in The Clumps, The Nutty Professor 2, in which Eddie plays uh, Sherman Clump, the, nutty, the titular Nutty Professor, Buddy Love, his evil alter ego, and his entire extended family. And whereas it was a really great one-off joke in um, the first Nutty Professor, it's just terrible in this. It's just nothing but scatological humor. Just fart jokes and, oh, you don't want to sleep with old people jokes, let alone old people that your grandma jokes. If each of the clumps represents like a personality of Eddie, it becomes this bizarre Herman's Head-esque uh, psychoanalysis for Eddie trying to figure out who the hell he is and why these parts all, you know, interact in a certain way but like the important thing to keep in mind is that eddie is the most important part of any film that eddie is in it used to be eddie would you know they would you would start with like a pretty good script and then you would give it to eddie murphy and through his just comedic genius he would ad lib and create something magical like uh, trading places or beverly hills cop uh coming to america all of these movies and every so often he would do these movies that, you know, like The Golden Child, where it's just like, look, we get that you want to be in the movies that you grew up in, but these are just not necessarily your strong suit. But now he's really just thinks he can do all of these things, and I wish he would just do funny stuff again. Eddie, for the love of God, please just come back to us. And that's really the plea in this video. But don't worry. Uh, next week we'll be we're gonna end Black Awesomeness Month on a very very high kicking note, and uh, that it'll be much more fun and less depressing because I miss Eddie Murphy so much. I'm gonna have to go and watch all these good Eddie Murphy movies so I can just wash the taste out of Pluto Nash, Meet Dave, and The Clumps, The Nutty Professor too. Because Jesus, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm.